in on these developments in the West Philippine Sea, geopolitical analyst Richard Hintyren. Welcome back to the story, con Richard. How are you guys? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so uh, Ronald, Richard, uh, joint exercises, they're firing r real artillery uh, outside of Balikatan. I mean, is this unusual or...? Ang medyo unusual yung pag-amin nung nagsasalita kanina na military officer na this is more in relation sa Taiwan. Anong mm -hmm. ibig sabihin nun, uh, Richard? Yung uh, nagsalita kanina na itong live exercises na ito ay mas in preparation for Taiwan. Hindi niya in-specify anong ibig sabihin nun. Well, I think since last year pa lang nakikita natin na different officials sa uh, mm -hmm. AFP, you know, including some of them that who we interviewed on our show, John, sa uh, One News View from Manila, admitted that the Taiwan question is increasingly relevant uh, sa Pilipinas. And of course, dun sa balikan ng exercises, nakita natin na may mga, uh, may mga uh, you know, there were drills. Now, obviously, what they had in mind is potentially China occupying some of our Batanes Islands uh, in an event of war over Taiwan. No, So I think ang nangyari lang dito is mas nahihirapan ang ating sandataan lakas para madinay na ang Pilipinas ngayon ay increasingly involved na dito sa tinatawag na integrated deterrence strategy kung saan ang Amerika at saka kanyang mga aliado kasama dyan ng mga Hapon, mga Pilipino, potentially also Australians and South Koreans down the road if ever talaga itong China ay susugod dyan sa, sa Taiwan. So I think this is where the relevance of that comes in. There was also another confirmation by the Japanese embassy na nagkaroon din tayo ng uh, an alternative quadrilateral drills ng Canada, Philippines, Japan, and the United States. So padame at padame uh, itong mga joint drills and exercises natin. At ito ay may kinalaman hindi lang sa Taiwan, obviously, pero bati dito sa issue sa West Philippines kung saan mainit-init din ang, ang, ang panahon. Pero Richard, for a long while ay hindi inaamin ng ating gobyerno na yung kanilang mga military exercises, joint military exercises, at katulad nitong military drills sa Ilocos, ay may kinalaman sa Taiwan. Parang ngayon ko lang narinig na inamin nila that this has a relationship do sa Taiwan issue. Dahil uh, for a long while, ang focus ng kanilang paliwanag, West Philippine Sea, at saka yung freedom of navigation. Baka nadulas. <laughs> Kasi sabi niya, sabi na ano, di ba? Uh, China is not in our mind. We're not thinking of China. Yeah. But nadulas nung sa part na tayo. <laughs> kaya nga, kaya kinagulat ako eh. <laughs> well, actually, last year, bago pumunta si Pangulong Bombo Marcos dyan sa Amerika, dun sa official visit niya, dun sa May last year, uh, may mga uh, may mga spokesman ng, uh, uh, ng ating sandatan lakas na nagsabi na the EDCA bases sa north of the Philippines could be used for contingency purposes. At obviously, ang reference point nun is potential contingencies sa, sa Taiwan dahil malapit sila sa Taiwan. At this yun orientation nila kumpara sa ibang EDCA bases at mga pasilidad kung saan may access ang mga Amerikano. So, what we're seeing here is, uh, you know, uh, parang creeping admission, if I can put it that way, <laughs> or honesty, <laughs> creeping honesty on the orientation of the Philippine foreign policy. Uh, on the part of the Chinese also, hindi na nila sineseparate yung Taiwan issue from the South China Sea issue. Isang integrated theater na rin tingin nila sa, uh, sa issue na yan. At kaya kung titignan mo yung ibang mga barko ng China, including mga Coast Guard vessels nila, yung mga iba na active lang dyan sa Taiwan Straits, ngayon ay pumupunta na rin sa West Philippine Sea. So now we have a situation of complete entwinement of the South China Sea disputes and Taiwan at Pilipinas ay nasa gitna ng ganitong uh, usapin, strategic discussions okay, na yan. Uh, uh, Richard, I wonder if, if uh, uh, should we be okay with that? Richard, no, we have to have, we have, to have really yeah. debate with uh, that issue kasi, uh, Patrick, this is not only an issue of strategy, it's also uh -huh. an issue of tactics in a sense right. that okay. to what degree, uh, yung, yung, yung drills, types of drills, types of weapon systems the Americans should put it. So I just came from New Zealand, no one week talks in there. Doon naman ang concern nila is AUKUS. Uh, kung dapat sa samang New Zealand, sa so Australia, US, UK. At yung sinasabi ng ibang tao from across the political spectrum dyan, whether conservative or progressive, sabi na kailangan pag-usapan natin na mabuti to. Hindi pwede na umasa lang tayo sa gobyerno to make the final po uh, positive judgment. Kasi ang laki na implication sa kanila if sumali sila sa AUKUS kasi masisira din ang relasyon nila sa China and that also could make them more or less, baka potentially they could be also lucky mm -hmm. of bigger powers of US and okay. Australia. So if mga New Zealand na medyo mm -hmm. progressive at uh, developed country, medyo may ganong concern, I think we in the Philippines should also have some serious discussion about how much we want to get involved in the Taiwan question without undermining our strategic autonomy and national independence. But isn't it also an issue of a constitutional issue? Dahil malinaw sa ating constitution, we denounce war as an instrument of foreign policy. 
At yung Taiwan issue is bordering on that issue. It's an issue of war. Whether aatakihin yung Taiwan o, hin o, o Pilipinas. Iba kasi yung aatakihin ng Pilipinas. Eh. Iba yung aatakihin yung Taiwan. No? At uh, yung sinasabi mo kanina, Richard, na this is a, yung EDCA is a contingency basis no, para sa mga Amerikano. What does that mean? Ano ibig sabihin ng contingency? Will it be used in a war over Taiwan? Yung mga ibig sabihin nun? Or is it well, basically I mean, defensive? All, I, I doubt, yeah. Ronald, that there'll be any preemptive strike by the U.S. or anyone yeah. against China on the Taiwan issue. Although, interestingly, President Xi Jinping, according to a Financial Times report, was kind of saying that uh, dun sa trip niya sa Europe kung saan inakusa niya yung America of trying to provoke a potential conflict there or drag China into the issue. But obviously, you know, anyone with a serious mind would not take that as seriously. But that's the discussion the Chinese side or pro-Chinese elements are trying to put forward na provocateur dito ang America. But last time I checked, actually, it's Taiwan which is being threatened and America is, of course, committed to the defense of Taiwan, although that could potentially also undermine their own one China policy. And there's a big debate about parameters of Taiwan US Relations Act 1979. Pagdating sa Pilipinas, wag natin kalimutan, meron tayong mutual defense treaty with the United States. So all the time, ang sinasabi natin is, tutulangan ba tayo ng mga Amerikano sa West Philippine Sea? Well, it cuts both ways. Mm -hmm. If we want the Americans to be more helpful to us on the West Philippine Sea issue, then the Americans would naturally expect us to help them kung, if ever, magkakaroon ng giyera dyan sa, sa, sa Taiwan. No? So in that sense, this is under, within the parameters of the Mutual Defense Treaty. And last time I checked, mm -hmm. the, uh, there's no constitutional ruling that the Mutual Defense Treaty would violate the Philippine foreign policy unless explicitly the U.S. was engaged in an offensive war, sobrang in your face na offensive war, which would make it a basis for us to not get involved, to say, no, we, we, we have a Mutual Defense Treaty, but it's called Mutual Defense, not Mutual Offense Treaty. But uh, I think fundamentally this is an issue of deterrence, but this is an issue also of burden sharing. So sasabi ng mga Hapon ang mga Amerikana at mga Pilipino ay free riders. Gusto lang nila pag tinitulungan namin sila, pero kung kailangan namin tulong nila, ayaw nila tumulong. At the same time, pwede mo rin sabihin, ayaw rin natin maging provocators at kumpara sa mga Hapon at Amerikana, napakalimitado yung capabilities natin at medyo bug down na tayo sa West Philippine Sea. So in short, Patrick, we can have a very lively and interesting debate here. So I don't agree with anyone who wants to shut this down and say, oh, clear cut yan, all in tayo, or clear cut yan, <laughs> dapat wala tayong sasabihin na. I think both sides are wrong. We have to have a healthy De debate just like the Kiwis yeah. are having a healthy debate or supposed to have a healthy debate on the AUKUS issue. Ang pinag-usapan dito yung fate, our strategic fate of our nation. Ang dal may dalawang different uh, lang dyan, no? issues, uh, Richard. Una, wala naman sa Constitution ng America that they renounce war as an instrument of foreign policy. Tayo, sa atin lang meron. Uh, at ikalawa, merong gray areas in terms of uh, one China policy tayo. Well, a U.S. then. Pero ang U.S. kasi for more than four, four decades, eh, strategic ambiguity yung policy nila sa Taiwan. Ngayon lang sila umamin that they will defend Taiwan militarily from invasion. Ngayon lang nangyari yan eh, nung panahon ni Biden, di ba? So, pero tayo, officially, we still have a one-China policy. So, medyo gray area yan, di ba? Kahit lusubin ng China ang Taiwan. Well, gray area din yun sa mga Hapon. Mm. Uh, more than gray area yun sa mga Australians. And mm. definitely mga Kiwis and New Zealand, yung mga ibang yan. And South Koreans don't want to get involved in this. I think both South Koreans uh, and to a lesser degree, some in Australia have also said na hindi 100% ano, na madadamay mm -hmm. tayo dyan. In Japan naman, obviously, dun sa, sa kanilang constitution, they also renounce war mm -hmm. as an instrument of foreign policy. Bawal yun sa saligang batas nila. Nevertheless, as you can see, both in Japan and also in the Philippines, it's a matter of interpretation, right? There's enough mm -hmm. loopholes or room for interpretation, whether dun sa ating saligang batas or dyan sa mutual defense treaty natin, to make it relevant dito sa Taiwan question. Again, for me, uh, we have to be careful not to you know, amplify the Chinese propaganda na tayo ang provocateurs. No, they're clearly the one who are threatening Taiwan. And on the part of the U.S., actually, daming napapaisip what on earth is happening here if Biden really knows what he's talking about. So <laughs> I think Biden for the fifth time, just a few weeks earlier, said na tutulungan na Amerika ang Taiwan kung sakaring susugurin sila ng China. But we know on many occasions, people from the U.S. State Department and different officials in the U.S., reiterated na may one China policy sila and that they don't have a mutual defense treaty with Taiwan. In fact, the U.S. is not even open and transparent about the degree to which it has security cooperation with Taiwan. So this is, yeah, this is like 50, 50 shades of gray, right? In <laughs> sense, inside has their own legal gray zone and they're trying to see how can they operationalize this in an event of conflict. Kaya, grabbing level of strategic ambiguity to 
Kaya sabi ko, ingat talaga tayo sa Pilipinas. Gusto ko tumulong sa Taiwan, obviously. Gusto ko tumulong sa ating mga allies. Para tanggapin din natin, medyo bogged down tayo sa West Philippines at limitado yung capacities natin so far. So we have to tread very, very carefully on this. Okay. Ang problema lang, Richard, Richard just, uh, my, yeah, uh, my question, uh, I'd just like to uh, sneak this question in. Yeah. You know, we're talking about gray areas and strategic ambiguity and all that. Where would you, okay, in your opinion, where do you think should the Philippines draw the line? Well, definitely pagdating sa burden sharing on the Taiwan question or anything of that matter, dapat any burden that we share should be proportionate dun sa capacity natin. So obviously, we're the weaklings on many fronts and we still need to build up our own capability. So instead of being a 30-30-30 split, for instance, among Japan, Philippines, and U.S., I would say operationally, it should, it should be something well, well, like I guess, 50. Richard, I and, guess, ang interest ng United States dito is like a real estate. I, I, they, they can't get anything from us in terms of equipment or anything like that or firepower, but their interest here is really re real estate location. So is that good enough? Well, I Should mean, that be yes, a 30 percent no, in sense providing that, of course, them a base? You, you, Yun yung uh, limitation natin historically, but in fairness, wag natin ni underestimate din yung Philippine Armed Forces of the Philippines. All of these balikan exercises are not just to show na mga Amerikano may mga big, big nice toys. The AFP is also absorbing the capacity to operate increasingly sophisticated weapon systems, and we're about to spend what ten, uh, what uh, thirty-six billion dollars okay, over yes. the next ten years. So, so we all agree that the AFP is a bit of real estate or rentier land, but unfortunately, uh -huh. that has been the case, of course, in the past. So it will have necessarily involve real estate land. You know, it could be rescue operation. It could be backup operations. For instance, sabi natin, okay, let me just spell it out. If you look at the war games. There is a potential for thousands of Americans getting injured or killed in the uh, southern portions of Taiwan if ever there's a war. So the expectation is the Philippines could come, save some of, I don't know, drowning soldiers, injured soldiers, retrieve some of the bodies. So it may not necessarily be Philippines uh, directly involved in combat operations, but Philippines providing logistical support, uh, r and support, and all sorts of other kind of backup support. So, so of course, the U.S. also has an interest for the Philippines to have some minimal capability to project power and be helpful to us. Hindi yung meron lang tayo keys to the EDCA basis. So, so, and, and the reason I'm saying this is because I don't think there'll be a war until the next five years. Of course, anything can happen, but probability-wise, I doubt there'll be a war in the next five years. Why, so why we're five years? I'm curious, Richard. Why five, five years? Now. Why five mm -hmm. years? I'm because, curious. Because China is still uh, uh, Preparing? a decade, is, uh, is that, is that a decade behind the Americans. No? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, the Xi, Jinping, Xi Jinping said that 2027, they have to be prepared, meaning they have to have a, to be in a position whereby my laban sila, my chance sila to succeed. That's totally different from saying we should invade Taiwan by 2027. And it's not like nakatunga nga lang yung kabila. As we speak, the Americans are looking at developing counter missile defense systems. So they're thinking of putting more missile defense system in Japan. Japan also developing its own missile defense system. The Taiwanese are improving their missile defense system. So I think one area which is going to be very relevant to us, Patrick and Ronald, in the coming years is, papayag ba tayo ng mga Amerikano maglalagay ng maraming missile defense systems sa atin? Of course, technically, they are missile defense systems, meaning they'll be used for defensive capability. But China will not interpret it that way. China will see it as a way whereby U.S. will neutralize China's ability to strike at American warships. So you can see how this can get very mm -hmm. high level, high stakes, and very operational. And that's why I'm saying, Patrick and Ronald, we have to have some transparency, mm -hmm. have proper debate. Ang ayoko mangyari is sinishot shut down yung debate. Or sa sabihin na provocator lang tayo, or sa sabihin nala natuta lang tayo na America. I think those two are caricatures of what's happening. And this is an unprecedented situation. We have never been in this kind of situation. Uh, China is a superpower like uh, nothing we have ever seen. And, and the U.S. is still a power to reckon with, and Japan and others are also coming in. At salamat sa ating geography, we are the very, very front line. Front line to Taiwan, front line to South China Sea, first island chain. Um, so these are tough, tough times for the Philippines. So we have to step it up. So I'm glad we're having these kinds of conversation because as I talk, I'm also thinking of all different scenarios whereby the Philippines could be over-involved or under-involved. So in short, we have to find that Goldilocks level of alliance whereby we're helpful enough to the Americans para hindi tayo useless, para may makuha rin tayo sa kanila when we need their help but not overdo it. We have to make sure it's proportionate to our capacity and doesn't undermine our strategic autonomy. Now, whether I'm confident that the Marcos administration can execute this perfectly, obviously I, I'm not in a position to perfectly vouch for them. Baka si Sir Ronald pwede mag-vouch for them. <laughs> in relation to that, uh, Richard, tingin mo another elephant in the room. Will the November election uh, alter 
uh, these dynamics. Halibawa, just in case manalo si Trump, will there be changes dun sa statement ni Biden that they will defend Taiwan militarily? Will a Trump presidency admit that or openly uh, claim that, that they will, they, they will uh, defend uh, uh, Taiwan militarily? Dahil yung presidente siya, wala siyang sinasabi tungkol dyan. Well, as we speak, the Biden administration is try to, trying to, quote-unquote, Trump-proof mm. its alliances in the region. <laughs> whether it's in Jaffos, Japan, Philippines, U.S., whether it's in New Squad, uh, we can have a debate about whether you can really Trump-proof these things because at the end of the day, Donald Trump is Donald Trump and he has his own mind. At the same time, if you talk to people uh, who, and some of them we have interviewed, who could be in positions, very senior positions, whether national security advisors or number two or number three, if not number one in the State Department of Defense or uh, Pentagon of the U.S., they are the China first thinking kind of people, meaning China talaga yung number one threat. So honestly, kung ikaw ay Ukraine, ikaw mag worry once Trump comes into power. Because the Trump administration, whether he's stopped, stopped strategies or himself, have made it clear they're not interested in helping Ukraine the way America has been doing for the past decades or so. Uh, so in theory, I think we have less to worry than, let's say, Ukrainians. But at the same time, for me, from what we saw in Trump 1.0, 1, uh, 1 is that he also has a tendency of, of insinuating himself into wars, potentially, in the Middle East. So actually, I'm fear ko dito is Trump might pick a war in the Middle East at the expense of his ability to uh, help us effectively, whether on the Taiwan question or the South China Sea issue. So more of, you know, kind of major sabog accident, yun ang mas worry ko, rather than principled focus. Can, because can, 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 it, can it be Trump any more, Richard, it, can it be any more sabog than what it is right now? Oh, with, it's with, a bottomless <laughs> ice tea, I'm telling you. I think, <laughs> I think people are not realizing things can keep on getting worse. I mean, we saw the withdrawal of U.S. from Afghanistan, the horrible, yung sobrang all over the place. And we thought, this is it. Biden cannot do anything worse than that. And then now we look <laughs> at the latest round of conflict. So let me tell you what, we, have, we should have no illusions about either U.S. or China acting as extremely reckless or irresponsible in the coming decades. Welcome to the 21st century. Kaya da dapat tayo, mga mas malilit na bansa, uh, whether ito ay Philippines, so you just explain, South you Korea, just explain, we have to work together. You, you, you just explain in, in, in detail or in a brief, uh, no, in uh, pagiging ng United States. I mean, is it then in our national interest that we go deep with them in this? Well, I mean, let's still not forget that the primary concern natin is China. The threat is coming from China, not from the United States. <clears throat> but you're correct to say that Major, we have to calibrate also in a sense that if the U.S. turns out as completely unreliable under Trump, meaning domestic politics is all over the place, more legal cases, picking fights right and left, then yes, we have to have red lines. Kaya nga sabi ko, parating, parating ang pinag-usapan ng mga ibang expert dyan is yung tinatawag na the risk, di ba? Yung, mm -hmm. yung, you, you minimize exposure, risk right. exposure sa China. Sabi ko, kailangan din natin ang the risk pag si Trump ang manalo. Not to mention, baka kay Biden din. I mean, he's going to be quite old if, if he goes into another <laughs> term. So we need to have also our red lines and the risk when we deal with the Americans. And that's why, and guess what? Mga Hapon, ganun din yung mga conversations behind the scenes. Mga Australians, ganun din. Definitely mga Europeo. The Europeans will have a big, big headache and problem with Donald Trump should, they, should he come back to power. So kaya nga, we have to laterally also talk to other countries na alay ng U.S., Ayo sa China, pero ayo rin nila madamay doon sa mga excesses, imperial excesses of any of these two superpowers. Again, I understand my position is quite nuanced in the sense that it doesn't fit into any of the camp. But honestly, I think this is how we should have conversation about these issues. Okay, maraming salamat, geopolitical analyst Richard Edarin. Magaling ka pa rin, Richard. Akala ko, tinalo ka na lang supranational, uh, <laughs> uh, kwan eh, yung supranational uh, awardee natin eh, na magaling daw sa geopolitics. Ayun na naman tayo. <laughs> so, kaya kaya sinama sa Ukraine, <laughs> sa baba, oh, sa baba Poland. No, oh. Dahil mas magaling kesa kay Richard eh, sa geopolitics. Si wala, wala Mr. Masabi. Supranational. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so ulitin, Richard Edarin. <laughs>